Okey, salam. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. Okey, kita berjumpa lagi. So untuk new lesson for lecture. Okay, so for today, uh, for this lesson, eh, I'm going to talk about a data warehouse. Okay, so for your information, eh, everybody. So now we are, eh, we recap again. Okay, so we are now in uh, week 10, alright, during the COVID-19 uh, situation, PKP. Right, so for today, eh, I'm going to talk about topics data warehouse and also we call it as a business intelligence. Okay, data warehouse plus uh, business intelligence. Okay, so now we are in week four. Eh, so eh, sorry, week ten. Right, it's supposed to be start from eighteen zero five until twenty two zero five, and by next week, eh, we're going to celebrate Hari Raya. Yeah, eh, we have to stop here. Okay, so for this lessons, right? So for this lessons, I'm going to talk about number one. Eh, for the data warehouse is the needs or the data analysis, and number two is business intelligence. This is very important. This is what we call as a BI, right? So the decision support data and also the data warehouse. Okay, so in this video we're supposed to stop here. Okay, this is consider part one okay so continue eh? so maybe we continue with uh, another part all right so part two here all right so this is also a data warehouse okay so cover task schema data analytics eh? online articles processings or, or labs right and done okay this is uh, this is consider part two Okay, so I try to finish uh, part one and part two together eh, within this week. Alright, so within this week, so hopefully, okay, you all can uh, listen and watch the video, okay, during week ten here, eh, for both eh, part one and also plus part two. Hopefully, okay, I try my best. Okay, so without further ado, right, so let's continue to part one data warehouse and also business intelligence uh, topics okay so uh, for this one okay we will <coughs> okay we will cover this uh, topics okay so looks at uh, chapter 13 all right chapter 13 business intelligence and also data data warehouse all right okay so let's start with uh, the first uh, slides okay so start from beginning all right so we are now in uh, chapter 13 all right chapter 13 uh, business intelligence and also data where we have for part uh, part one okay so hopefully I uh, guess stop until part one then let's con uh, then let's continue with the part two okay so next okay so for the uh, learnings objectives eh, for this chapter right after you all uh, finish uh, this chapter okay you should know what is business intelligence and eh, provide how business intelligence provides a comprehensive business decision support uh, frameworks okay so the keyword for Okay, for this chapter is decision, right? And about the business intelligent architecture is evolutions and reporting styles. And, and then after that, the relationships and difference between operational data and also uh, decision support uh, data. And next, it, uh, we look into a data warehouse and how it's prepared the data at once. Okay, so this is the learning's objective. Okay, so for this one, uh, for this learning objectives like I mentioned earlier eh, maybe we will cover in part 2 alright so for part 2 eh, we talk about star schema data analytics or labs okay and also the the how we can manipulate the data here eh, using the SQL alright so next 
Okay, what is business intelligence? Alright, uh, so business intelligence is very important nowadays. Uh, okay, so during, uh, especially during our okay COVID nineteen pandemics and now, so there's a lots of uh, issue eh, regarding this uh, COVID nineteen and lots of uh, country eh banyak negara-negara yang sekarang ini akan gunakan uh, business intelligence eh tools untuk transform the data into uh, knowledge and so and then after that make decisions okay so let's uh, continue with this one okay what is business intelligence okay so number one eh, business intelligence is comprehensive cohesive integrated sets of tools and processes ah, okay so meaning that's uh, yang pertama mesti ada tools lah eh so like a software alright to to what eh to number one capture okay capture apa so normally kita akan capture the first thing is kita, kita capture data lah eh and then uh, collect the data integrate the data so like uh, in this uh, current situations okay we capture all the data about covid-19 alright then after that we collect the data integrate the data eh maybe uh state by state eh, government by uh, uh daerah by daerah eh, district by district and so on then store the data all right and at the end of the day we analyze the data so that's why eh, at the end of the day every day kementerian kesihatan malaysia eh, makes a press conference eh to uh, present the data uh, so normally the process is something like this eh they are using the business intelligence eh, how to project Okay, so what is next? What is next? What is next? And so on. Okay, right. So the purpose, okay, to generate and present information to support business decision making. Ah, uh, okay. So just nice. Eh, during our uh, now we are in eh the pen eh, in during the era of COVID 19s Okay, so we we can see that's a lots of uh, data that we eh gather, collects, integrates. Eh what eh number one is to to present the information and uh, the information is going to support the business decision making so that is why what is kind of uh, decision making okay this is one of the decision making pkp uh, okay so next after pkp we have pk pb uh, okay this is all the decision making eh that uh, need, uh, made by our minister uh, government eh Uh, so Kementerian Kesihatan and also Perdana Menteri. Uh, okay, so this is what we call decision making. It's very crucial. Eh? It's very crucial. Okay, so all of this eh, involve business intelligence and eh, data and so on. Okay, alright. So next, alright. So allow business to transform. Uh, okay, I think uh, you all eh, for my class, eh, you all dah dengar dah benda ni since uh, week one, week two. Alright. So number one, we have a data. Okay, what is data? Eh, dah tahu dah apa dia. Then we transform the data into information. Uh, okay, so then after that, eh, like I mentioned earlier, eh, we store the database, the data inside the database, and towards the end, make a decision. Decision here. Uh, okay, decision. Eh, decision making. Alright. So, uh, so allow the business to transform. Okay, number one, data into information. So this is our data. Eh, normally, and eh, there's a lot of data about the pandemic, eh, COVID-19 pandemics, and then turn into information. Okay, uh, process the data, eh, store the data, and so on. Integrates the data, and after that, the information returns into a knowledge. Uh, so that's why eh, we know about COVID-19. Eh, we know about this and this and this. Eh, because all the informations now is become a know a knowledge. Right, and after that, eh, knowledge, we turn that into a wis wisdom. Ah, uh, okay. This is what we call decision. Ah, uh, okay. So they they need to make a decision, eh, based on the no, the knowledge. Alright. So knowledge where? Ah, uh, in the business inte intelligence. So it's very good uh, example now, eh, for COVID nineteen pandemic. Uh, okay. So uh, if let's say if you you all, eh. A Google wisdom and eh, what is wisdom? It's actually wisdom is actually X and eh, one of the eh, one of the definition is experience. Uh, okay, so 
at the end of the day, we, we, we have experience. Eh? Uh, so, contoh, like uh, before this PKP, and then we have, we know, eh, based on the PKP, eh, PKPB, and so on. Okay, this is based on the, eh, number one, of course, the data, information, knowledge, and at the end of the day, we have a, we have an uh, experience, eh, how to tackle the, uh, the, the, the problems, eh, how to solve the problems. Okay, until now, we have a PKP, PKPB, eh, dan sebagainya. Eh, so, there's lots of things that uh, government need to do, and then normally, that what we call it, so wisdom. Eh, They need, we need experience. Eh? We need experience in order to uh, to make a dizzy decision. Okay, before this, we, we don't have any experience about the COVID-19. So, that's why all this flow eh, will transform. Then, at the end of the day, it will become a business inter intelligent. Okay, let's move to the next uh, slides. Okay, so this is the framework. Uh, if, let's say, you all can understand what I mentioned earlier. Okay, so this is what we call as a business intelligent frame frameworks okay of course eh, number one we need a data here uh, okay we need a data so all the data eh, whatever data we need eh, to, and then after that data from what from people here eh? so maybe something related to the people eh, environment and so on okay and what we need to do with the data okay we need to process the data uh, okay so for what to turn into information. So, who's going to do this? Of course, eh, like I mentioned earlier, before this, manage management. Eh? So, we have a management database administrator and so on. That what we can consider as a manage management. What are they going to do? Okay, there's uh, one uh, keyword here. ETL stand for extractions, transformations, and also lo loading. Okay, so you will see again this... Uh, these words eh, in subject big data letter uh, if let's say eh, you take 408 uh, right in subject big data so we uh, you, you will learn more about extract how to extract the data and then how to transform the data eh, then after that loading the data eh, into into what okay so of course when we talk about loading they will load the data into a data where warehouse uh, okay so This is our topic, business intelligence and also data, data warehouse. So, data warehouse is a place to store the information. Uh, right. So, the difference is data warehouse consider big and the tablet is a sub of the data. Yeah, okay, we talk about this later. Okay. Uh, when we talk about warehouse, warehouse, uh, is, yeah, we, can, we can imagine it's very big. Yeah, it's very big. So, for uh, example, for COVID-19, yeah, we can see that This is a pandemic. Pandemic means very big. Okay, so who's going to manage the data? Okay, for me is eh, maybe what we call as a who. I eh, will have organization. Okay, they will have the the data warehouse for uh, for the world, eh, for all countries eh, in the world. Uh, okay, so maybe we as Malaysia, maybe we have a data mart and eh, supply data mart to WHO. Then WHO will do something about the data. Okay, so the next process is. After that, they will store the data here. Okay, so what they need to do? Of course, eh, they need to query again the data. Eh? So in our case, we already learned about the SQ, SQL, eh? structured query language, and make a report, reportings. Uh, okay, so in terms of what? Okay, this is what we call reporting in terms of data analy analytics. Uh, okay, so data analytics is also part of big data environment uh, okay so if you all are interested inter um, uh, need to know more about some big data right make sure you all get a text subject 408 uh, okay so we talk about data analytics eh? so nowadays uh, data analytic data analysis eh? uh, someone that can do data analytics eh? can have a very uh, high profile eh? Now they because eh, they, they need to know everything. Okay, then after that, when we have a data analytic, we can do a monitoring and also alerting. Uh, so this is what happened today eh, during the COVID-19. Okay, so our Kementerian Kesihatan, KKM, and eh, also our government, monit monitoring and alert. Eh, uh, so they will send as SMS, they will send uh, maybe face, uh, message, eh, to Facebook, Instagram, social media and so on. 
Okay, because they need to monitor and also alert us. Okay, so to stay at home eh, during the pandemics and so on. And of course, when we talk about the data, we need to visualize the data. Uh, okay, so we need to visualize. So of course, eh, we eh, in in our situation, eh, they visualize like uh, in sometimes it look like a graph. Eh, sometimes they just a wording, but it's come from this kind of process. Okay, so start from the data, and then after that we transform, okay, store, and at the end of the day we visualize. Okay, it looks like uh, simple, but this is very tedious work. Eh, sangat leche, sangat rumit. So that's why, eh, if let's say uh, we see press press conference eh, at 4:30 p.m., 5:00 5 p.m. Okay, so every day, uh, so our pengarah kesihatan need to uh, present eh, to visualize the data so the process is very very tedious eh? if let's say you all understand the database okay this is the eh, the things that you need to to do eh? so towards the end if involved yeah with all these uh, frameworks okay number one is also people eh, management governance eh? so governance is what eh, government eh, who who govern the 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 process eh, who manage the process gov governance and also government to different things and also we need the process here ah, okay so uh, this is what we call business intelligent uh, frameworks okay let's move to the next one okay business intelligent okay this one is quite simple eh? uh, for this one is quite simple okay so for the business intelligent okay number one we call it as a dashboard and also business activity monitoring Okay, okay. What is dashboard? Dashboard is actually shows a key business performance indicator in a single integrated uh, view. Uh, okay, so in this uh, slides, eh, you need to understand two different things. Okay, number one is dashboard, and eh, number two is portal. Okay, what is the difference between uh, dashboard and portal? Okay, so uh, look carefully. Okay, so for the dashboard, I eh, mean in this definition, it shows a key business performance indicator in a single integrated view so maknanya meaning that if let's say we look into one uh, uh, page and eh, websites okay so all the information is there uh, so all the information is there in only single integrated view we, we don't need to to go to page number two number three number five and so on okay so we can see everything in one page and eh, in maybe in only the main page uh, so this is what we call as a dash dashboard and just imagine your uh, if let's say you have a car your father have a car and eh, they call it a dashboard eh? uh, so all the information is there meter fuels right and maybe uh, rpm and so on okay so in single integrated view okay we can see straight forward eh, based on uh, single uh, view okay compared to portal eh, portal is integrated data using web browser from multiple source into a single web page okay the difference is okay if let's say you call it this is a, is a portal portal means okay we integrate uh, right the keyword here is integrate uh, data from uh, using the web browser okay let's say for example why they call uh, you all punya portal they call it as a student portal because uh, inside there uh, you have let's say you all other i I learn. Okay, they have a link here. Okay, let's say uh, HEA here. They have a link here. Eh? HEP have a link here. Okay, uh, what else? Uh, maybe you need to uh, hostel, for example, here. Eh? Okay, so this is all the, the links. Okay, but still in single web, web page. Uh, okay, single web page. But then they integrate all the web browser. Uh, this is what we call super web browser. I learn. HEP, HEA, eh? uh, maybe a bursary eh, for your urine fee and so on. Okay, in single web, web page. So that's why they call it as a student por portal. Eh? They, they, they don't call it a student dashboard. Uh, they call it as a student portal because they have uh, integration integrations of the web, uh, web browser. Compared to dashboard, eh, you can see everything here. Especially eh, something like a graph, eh, a graphicals, okay? like uh, the previous one. Okay, so we need to visualize the data. Okay, so maybe uh, you all can uh, Google, okay, dashboard and also for 
portal okay okay so so for this one and the next one is data analysis and also reporting tools Okay, so business intelligence tool for data analysis and also for the reportings okay and the next one is for data mining tools okay we need to mine the data mines mean lombong okay kita kena melombong data tersebut eh it's not just a simply eh, we can we can just simply look into the data eh, we need to to mine the, the, the data eh because the data is okay for keyword for keyword for data mining is hidden eh tersorok okay ah uh, because ada sometimes the, the data is hidden eh data-data ni tersorok jadi kita kena uh, mine eh the data ah uh, okay so dalam case uh, PKP ni ataupun COVID-19 pun eh sometimes we need to uh, mine the data kita tak tahu kat mana eh, dan sebagainya jadi kita kena tengok all the trend eh all the trends eh all the the flow uh, so that's why eh sometimes data tu tak ada tapi dia dia kena dia kena cari dia tersorok eh is hidden ah uh, okey the next one is data where warehouse eh data warehouse ni adalah tempat untuk kita nak store simpan data tersebut okey and we have all apps tools and also data visualize ni untuk kita nak uh, view visualize uh, okey to visualize untuk kita nak paparkan data tersebut eh so kita ada all apps eh online uh, articles process eh all apps okey uh, this is in part 2 nanti eh later eh we talk about all apps okey online articles uh, YSP okey never mind eh later i will talk about this eh in part 2 Okay. Okay, so the next one is ah uh, okay, practice to manage practices to manage your data. Ah uh, okay, so number 1, ah uh, okay, master data management MDM. Okay, so collections of concept, techniques and process for identification, definition and so management of the data elements, okay? Uh, so we need someone somebody to to collect the data eh to collect the process eh, to make a process and so on so in in uh, in our case in covid-19 is actually eh, we can see that KKM Kementerian Kesihatan Malaysia eh will do this uh, master data management okay they will collect all the information okay from the the different sources maybe hospital clinics and so on okay number 2 is a governance okay is governance what is governance governance is method of government for controlling business health and for consistent decision making okay so in our case eh is also kementerian kesihatan malaysia eh we make a governance and also our prime minister eh will do uh, talking eh and make a decision making so that's why uh, pm we get advice from uh, pengarah kesihatan okay uh, so so you say say kita eh tak boleh balik raya and so on uh, so that is what we call as a governance method of government for controlling business health uh, so there's need someone somebody so in our case is our government eh to control the business health for a consistent decision making so they have they need to make a decision making so kalau kena PKP kita PKP lah ramai-ramai eh semua sekali tak boleh balik kampung semua jangan balik kampung okay that's what we call as a uh, decision making so untuk apa tujuan ni eh for what uh, so kita we have a key performance indicator uh, okay numeric or scale based measurement that as, assess companies effectiveness in reaching its goal uh, okay so kita kena ada KPI kat sini KPI kita apa Kementerian Kesihatan sebut KPI kita apa uh, okay KPI kita kalau kita nak keluar daripada PKP ni sekurang-kurangnya jumlah kes mestilah satu angka sehari uh, okay so maksud dia mungkin satu uh, hari ni kes dua saja yang kena covid esok tiga kita nakkan satu digit barulah kita boleh capai KPI and also we can reach our goals nanti boleh barulah boleh kita declare no more PKP for example eh for example okay so this is what we call as a KPI so of course KPM prime minister and we have they have a KPI eh key performance indicator eh numeric or scale based eh numeric means number so number this is what we call number okay so kita nakkan covid-19 ni uh, per per day cases only single digit eh one until nine eh kalau 10 pun dah double digit ah uh, tu tak boleh maksud dia kalau 10 eh tak capai KPI kita ni uh, okay so that's the the intention eh for this one okay it's very good uh, example eh because of covid-19 pandemics okay i can give you a very simple example like that you can imagine okay let's proceed to the next uh, 
the slides. Okay. Uh, for the next slide, says practicing, uh, still practicing to manage the data. Okay, we need to visualize the data. Okay, it's very simple. Okay, so abstracting data to provide information in a visual format. Okay, of course we need visual. Okay, so that's why. Kalau petang-petang tengok press conference, eh, kita akan nampak all the graph, 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 eh, and so on. Eh, because people need to visualize. Eh, they need to see the data, the facts, eh, uh, all the visualized. They don't want to see the all the list, 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 Enhance the user ability or to efficiently comprehend the meanings of the data, and there's a lot of techniques. I think you all are familiar with these techniques: pie charts, line bars, scatter plots, gun chart, heat maps, and so on. Okay, so now, kalau siapa yang tengok press conference KKM setiap petang, eh, so biasanya dia ada sebut satu perkataan R0, 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 eh, R0, 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 this is our KPI ni, ya, kalau, kalau nanti baca lah balik, eh, kalau N, A, U, G, H, T, R0, lah, tak silap saya, eh, uh, so pengarah kesihatan selalu sebut perkataan ni, eh, R0, 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 eh, because this is our indicator, eh, eh, bila kita dah visualize, kita nakkan data tu menurun, kita tak nak data tu menaik, kadang-kadang uh, ada data menaik, because based on dia punya, uh, uh, kita what we call as, eh, prediction, Okay, kita tak nak prediction ni. So, kalau boleh kita tak nak based on prediction. Kita nak based on the the actual value. Okay. So, this is what we call data visualization. <coughs> okay, let's move to the next one. Okay, reporting styles of a modern BI. So, for this one, it's also quite simple. Okay, we can use advanced reporting, monitoring and alerts, and also advanced data <coughs> analytical. Okay, so this is involve big data eh so so now we are in the era of ir 4.0 okay one of the element is big data <coughs> people talking about big data so in big data we have advanced data analytics eh in advanced data analytics okay let's move to the next one okay business intelligence benefits okay what is the benefits of business intelligence bi uh, okay number one okay <coughs> Improve decision making. Okay, we can see. Okay, when we are using a business intelligent, eh, we can improve decision making. Like in our case in COVID nineteen, so cases day per day, eh, decrease, eh, menurun because of decision making made by KKM and also Perdana Menteri, kan? So kita dah berapa dari kampi dua bulan lebih PKP sambung lagi until six June. Eh, this is what we call as a decision making for what? Because we have, we need to achieve the KPI. So what KPI? Because we we have business intelligence data here. Okay. So number two is integrating architecture. Eh, we need to integrate all the architecture. Okay, kemudian kesihatan, clinic, hospitals, eh, and also maybe swasta, private. Private hospital, private clinic, so on. Eh, so they need to integrate eh all this architecture eh to make a decision making. Okay, number three is we can use common user interface for data reporting and also analysis. All right, so okay, so number three is a common. This interface for data reporting and also this is because why is common because everything is integrating. Okay, so kita dah integrate kita dah gabungkan, eh, so we can have a common user interface. Okay, number four is common data repository foster single versions of company data. Okay, so common data repository foster single of company data. So that's why. Sekarang ni yang bercakap selalunya adalah KKM, Kementerian Kesihatan Malaysia. Okay, not PM. So PM only announce is very important issue and very important announcement. Okay, but then for presenting the data for for COVID nineteen, it's actually done by KKM. Okay, because they have all the repository, eh, the common data in the repository. Repository ni tempat simpanan. Eh, so kita ada database kita sendiri. And number five improves organizational performance. Okay, of course, kita kena nampak. This is one of the benefit kita dah nampak sekarang ni ramai orang puji KKM. 
Kementerian Kesihatan Malaysia because <coughs> eh, they done a very good job, right? So that's what we call eh, can improve organizational perform performance. Uh, okay, so based on the data, they 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 done all this process. Okay, so at the end of the day, they can improve the organizational performance. Okay, let's move to the next one. <coughs> Okay, business uh, intelligent evolutions. Eh, I will not uh, read uh, the words by words. Okay, uh, so I think you can read again eh, later. Eh, you have uh, the the slides eh, with you all. Okay, so the first one is of course the style is traditional. Uh, okay, so the style is traditional. Eh, the, what we call as a uh, online transactions processing. Okay, and then after that we have MIS, eh, Management Information System, right? And then the next one we have a first generation departmental decision support system DDS. Okay, this this is also a long long time ago. Okay, they cover everything here. Eh, this is what we call evolution. Eh, they punya process. Eh, from the traditional until now. Okay, let's move to the next. The rest, I think maybe you can read again. Okay, and <coughs> now the next uh, generation is first generation of BI okay based on the operational data and also external data okay this is something like uh, early 1990s 1990s all right 2000 yeah millennium is on and the next one we have a second generation BI online analytical processing we call it OLEPS OLEPS online process uh, pro uh, analytical processing and now we have a third generation mobile BI and also cloud based Okay, so this is our era, eh, mobile. So, semua dah tengok dekat handphone dan semua sekarang ni simpan dekat cloud. Eh. Uh, so, dekat dalam drive, Google Drive. Uh, this is what we call as a uh, cloud. Okay, so this is our era. Uh, so, sekarang ni kita dah move. Eh, the evolution is very fast. Eh. So, kita dah sampai kepada third generation mobile. Then, maybe after this, eh, if let's say, kita tengok, eh, maybe after cloud nanti, this is the term ni nanti, eh, big data. Eh, because part of uh, big data element is mobile and also cloud. Uh, okay, so we are now in the era of big, big data. Okay, <coughs> okay, the next one. Okay, this is another evolutions of BI information dissemination so formats. All right, like I mentioned earlier, eh, before this, eh, 1970s is on the uh, on paper, then 1980s spreadsheets because we have Excel. Okay, all right. And then after that, 1990, we have a something like uh, very good reporting eh, based on the all labs online, online. Eh, and then 2000 and above, we have a dashboard that I mentioned earlier in the single view. We can see everything here. Eh, all the information is in the single view. And 2010s and above, eh, we have a, we have a mobile environment. And now we are in 2020. Is this is our era? Eh, big data. Okay. So everything is in big, big data. So COVID-19 is also something involved in big data because the data is all over the world. Right? Semua negara involved. So that's why sometimes kita dapat satu sahaja information dalam tu ada all the countries eh, uh, information. So this is big data. Siapa yang nak kumpulkan ni? Eh, he's actually, uh, kalau kita dalam kes kita who lah, eh, World Health, Health Organization. Eh. Uh, so they can they can collect all the data from the all countries, analyze, process, and so on. And then after that, they will get one uh, visualizations. Okay? Uh, so based on the country and so on. Okay. <coughs> Next. Okay, business intelligence technology trends. Okay, I think this one you all can uh, uh, This is point point yang basically related to the test and so on. Okay. So number one, data storage imp improvement. Uh, okay, when we talk about BI technology, of course, we can improve the data storage. Number two, business uh, intelligent appliances. Okay, uh, in this case, well, maybe apps, eh, maybe software and so on. And the third one, business intelligent as a service. Uh, okay, so uh, business intelligent, eh, before this, we talk about product, but then this is a service. Let's, uh, the example is like, uh, now we have a Grab. Uh, okay, Grab, say Grab is a service. Right, so they take advantage of uh, COVID nineteen. So now everyone is using Grab. Eh? Grab is a service. Grab don't have any uh, like what we call it as a motorcycle, their own motorcycle, their own cars, eh? and so on. They are using 
only a service okay and also like uh, Trivago for the hotel and so on okay this is also service okay and then the next one is that big data analytics uh, okay like I mentioned earlier yeah, big data analytics this is our era big data analytics is very important okay uh, market sangat besar eh, for those who have a knowledge about the big data and towards the end this is uh, quite dangerous okay personal analytics eh, is it happen nowadays personal analytics so now eh, Google I think Google can eh, Google know everything about us right when we talk about Google and eh, when you use the service eh, Google service eh, Google from Google Drive Google to whatever all Google eh, I think Google can straightforward know your personality eh, your personal analytics eh, personal analysis <coughs> It's quite simple, okay? Then if let's say you, eh, you just type your name in the Google, I think eh, if let's say you're active in the eh, on, online and so on, eh, everything is there. Eh? Google can trace you, eh, even your location, whatever it is. Okay, so let's move to the next slide. Okay, uh, decision support data. Uh, okay, so decision support data number one is effectiveness of bi depends on quality of data gathered at operational okay if let's say you all can still remember okay before this eh, i talk about this is operational this is middle management this is top management ah, okay so in order for the top management to make a decision the data in the operational must be very 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 uh, we must gather we must collect a quality data eh, at the operational level then the top management can make a, a good decision okay good decision all right so the next one <coughs> operational data seldom well suited for decision support task still the keyword here is decision like i mentioned earlier eh, in the slides eh, uh, so this the keywords for this chapter is decision uh, number two here stored in relational database with highly normalized uh, structures okay we talk about this eh? normalization and so on okay i don't want to explain uh, further okay so the third one optimized to support transaction representing data operate operation eh? representing the data a uh, daily operation sorry eh? or representing the daily operation uh, okay so uh, now covid ni daily lah kan kalau kita tengok eh? so every day kena ada something eh kena kena kita kena ada data kita kena collect kita kena analyze sampailah ke decision make, making presenting and also presentation making okay let's move to the next slides okay decision support data eh differ from operational <coughs> number one is time span okay uh, so that's why sometimes it daily weekly monthly and so on so in our case in covid-19 it looks like it's a daily right granularity eh we sometimes it's drilled down decompose a data to a lower level eh? so to the lower level and roll up aggregating data into the higher level so from bottom to to top eh? that's why they have to to think eh, to definitions bottom up and eh? top down eh? if let's say you, you heard about it and also dimensionality eh? dimensionality so they got dimension maybe 2d 3d dimension and so on okay we talk about this later okay let's move to the next one Okay, contrasting operationals and decision support characteristic. Uh, okay, so this one uh, pun saya tak akan baca uh, text by text. Okay, so the characteristic is something like this. Okay, data currency, granularity, eh, summarization, data model, transactions, data volumes, eh, big or small and so on, eh, scope and so on. Okay, uh, so we have uh, the operational data here. If let's say big data, we have uh, hundreds of giga gigabytes eh, of data, or maybe until up to the terabytes and also peta petabytes. Eh. So that's why uh, in big data eh, we can <coughs> we can reach uh, this terabyte, so or petabyte, or even more than that. Okay, uh, all right. So this is all the the decision support data. Okay, next. Okay, decision support database requirements. Uh, okay. Number one, database schema must support complex and non-normalized data representations. Okay, 
support complex and why they talk about non normalized before this kita sebut normalization tiba-tiba non normalized and non normalized so, so that's why in this situation this is related to big data and normally big data is stored in a non normalized data uh, okay small small data small data we can store in the normalization and in the normalized data but in big data because of the data is very complex and they must support non normalized data uh, okay so this is the thing that we need to understand okay data must be aggregated and also summarized okay sometimes data ni mesti kita kena summarizekan data tu kita tak nak ada data ni banyak-banyak eh so kita nak tengok satu page part macam tu saja eh dia akan dapat data and queries must be able to extract multidimensional time time slice uh, okay so <coughs> bila kita buat SQL eh kita query maksud dia dia boleh manipulate all the data okay from different dimension alright let's move to the next one Okay, this is support database requirements. Uh, okay, then this is the, the the requirement for the database. Okay, number one, data extraction and so also loading. So, if let's say you all still can remember, this is what we call TTL, extracts, transform, loading. Yeah. Okay, ada dalam gambar before this. Yeah. So this is also the issue in the big data. Extract, transform, loading. Okay, so we need to extract and also loading the data and eh? allow a batch and schedule data extraction support different data sources okay and check for inconsistent data or data validation rules uh, okay so bila kita play with the very complex data eh, we need to check all the validations and also data and support advanced integrations aggregations and also classification uh, advanced so that's why we talk about advanced still once again big data eh? this is all the issue in the big data okay database size should <coughs> all right very large database okay uh, of course lah and then big data eh? and advanced storage technology and also multi processor technology uh, so we need these kinds of require requirement eh? so we need up to uh, we need to uh, get all the information the data up to date eh? <coughs> next okay characteristic of data warehouse uh, and also operational data warehouse uh, okay we talk about this uh, later okay in our next uh, slides okay so we have a data warehouse okay what is data warehouse a place to store the day the data okay so we need to understand all this uh, characteristic okay uh, number one is integrated okay kita bila kita nak simpan data tu dalam data warehouse kita mesti pastikan data tu integrated boleh integrate Okay, sama ada eh, using operational ataupun data warehouse data. Okay, subject oriented eh, data that are stored with the functional or process orientation. For example, data may be stored for invoice, payment and also credit. Uh, so, this is subject oriented. Time variant. Uh, okay, also kalau time is date eh, data recorded as a current transaction. Uh, bank, for example, eh, using a time variance. Right? And non-volatile non volatile data updates are frequent and common for example inventory amount changes with each sale therefore the data environment is fluid uh, okay so non volatile kita kena dapatkan kadang-kadang harga-harga berubah kan ada promotions eh, ada itu ada ini uh. so data yang kita simpan tu kena non volatile okay next alright so this is another things eh talk about ETL so the the details maybe later I'll talk about this as very uh, in simple way Okay, number one, we have uh, operational data. Of course, we need to extract the data E. Then after that, we transform the data T. Transform into what? We filter, integrate, classify, aggregate, summarize, so on. And last, lastly, we load the data into our data warehouse. Eh? Uh, so, using what? Okay, this is the the characteristic. Integrated, subject orient, time variant, and non-volatiles. Eh? Just like before this. Alright, so this is what we call the ETL process. So, for what? Okay, again, decision. Eh? We need to make a decision. Eh? Kita perlukan decision. So, bila dah ada all this kind of environment, eh, kita senang nak buat decision. Okay, next. Uh, okay, data mat. Okay, data mat. What is data mat? Data mat is a small single subject data warehouse sub subset. Uh, okay, so kita ada data warehouse. Dan kalau kita panggil data mat, itulah subset. Okay, contoh, kalau katalah dalam kes kita COVID tadi ni, okay, who 
bila-bila WHO ni World Health Organization okay, biasanya kita bayangkan dia ada warehouse ok, so kalau kita Malaysia, KKM ok, normally KKM ni akan ada data, data mat ok, why? because this is part of the data warehouse tadi ni uh, this subset of the data warehouse oh, so kita kena supply data dekat WHO ni, World Health Organization eh, KKM kena supply data every day dan dia akan simpan dalam satu data yang dan nanti who ni akan keluarkan all the statistic ok, uh, so untuk apa tadi, kalau dah tamat tadi, of course kita akan buat yang kedua provide decision support to small group of people macam kita untuk Malaysia sajalah eh, so each country akan buat dia punya sendiri dah tamat sendiri lah, ok, another example kalau macam kita UITM ok, kita bayangkan di Sya'alam kita panggil data warehouse uh, data warehouse, the DW Uh, so dalam untuk setiap cawangan macam kita cerita before this ya yeah, setiap cawangan Seremban for example lah kita akan ada data mat uh, contoh because this is subset of data warehouse ya yeah, eh, insyaallah uh, okay so that's another example okay benefits over data warehouse lower cost and shorter implement implementation times technological advancements and also inevitable people issue okay so kita akan nampak lah kat sini so very simple kan kita everyday kita boleh dapat maklumat tu ya eh every day shorter time implementation times or also cost dan kita tahu sekarang ni teknologi sangat advance kita boleh tengok straight forward dekat handphone eh, video facebook and so on okay and also this is issue about people eh kadang-kadang ada orang tak nak dia sangat susah untuk uh, apa tu benda-benda macam ni uh, so kita boleh terus eh send the information to them okay next okay i think uh, okay so this is uh, the last to uh, apa tu slides uh, 12 rules for a data warehouse okay so i think this one you can uh, read again okay? on your own okay number one let's say for example data warehouse and operational environment are separated data warehouse data are integrated eh? biasanya data warehouse ni dia akan bergabung eh? the data warehouse contain historical lah. okay this is another keyword historical data over a long time of period Ha, biasanya dalam data warehouse kita akan simpan benda-benda data-data yang dah jadi sejarah eh? tujuan untuk apa? Ha, untuk kita buat analisis for example in our case UITM okay, contoh kita akan simpan all the, the historical data about our student to, untuk apa? Ha, untuk alumni contohnya eh? so later nanti bila dah 20 tahun, 10 tahun akan datang nanti you akan dapat invitation by, from UITM kan sebab you all adalah alumni contohnya so this is all historical Okay, data warehouse are snapshots data capture given point uh, given point in the time. Uh, okay, kita akan ada eh, dah kikok masa-masa. Dan data warehouse data are subject oriented. <coughs> data warehouse uh, data are mainly read only. Okay, so macam kita simpan read only saja, kita tak boleh nak ubah-ubah. Okay, with speed base update from operation data, no online updates are allowed. Uh, okay, so normally data warehouse ni biasanya dia akan ikut batch. Eh, dia akan simpan batch by batch. Okay, number seven. Data warehouse development life cycle differ from classical development. Data warehouse development is data driven. Eh? They based on the data. Okay, number eight. Data warehouse contain data with several levels of details. Uh, okay, of course kita kena ada details. Eh, kita kena ada semua detail-detail data sebut. And data warehouse environment is characterized by read-only transaction and very large uh, sets. Number ten. Data warehouse environment has system that trace data source transmission and also store storage. Uh, okay, dan and number 11, data warehouse metadata are critical component of this environment Okay, kita kena perlukan metadata ni macam dia punya uh, apa tu? the details eh, about the data tu and number 12, data warehouse contain a chargeback mechanism for resource usage that enforce optimal use of the data by the end user uh, Okay, so this is the 12 uh, rules for the data warehouse i think eh from time to time maybe you can memorize eh these uh, rules okay no need to understand everything eh now eh just try to recall back eh whatever this name eh you already learn okay so i think eh with that okay so next eh in part 2 we continue with the star schema so with that i think uh, thank you very much for listening Okay, this is part one of uh, data warehouse and also business intelligence. Uh, thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Kita jumpa lagi eh, dalam part two.